How's it going guys? This is Craig Biomass and today we are going to be talking about a tool called XBrowser Sync. Browser syncing as it should be, secure, anonymous and free. XBrowser Sync is a free and open source alternative to browser syncing tools offered by companies like Google, Mozilla, Opera and others. The project was born out of a concern for the over-reliance on services provided by the big tech, who collect as much personal data as they can and have demonstrated that they do not respect the user's privacy. The big tech constitute of Google, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, etc. X Browser Sync respects your privacy and gives you complete anonymity. No sign up is required and no personal data is ever collected. To start syncing, simply download the X Browser Sync for your desktop web browser or mobile platform. As of now, they are only available on Android, but they may release a version for iOS very soon. You just have to enter an encryption password and click Create New Sync. You receive an anonymous sync ID which identifies your data and can be used to access your data on any other web browser or device that you choose. Xbrowser Sync also provides some extra features like tagging your bookmarks and it also provides a simple intuitive interface to search through your bookmarks and share them. It works with the browser's native bookmarking features so you can keep using the native tools whilst always staying in sync. It will also respect your bookmark folder hierarchy so it can sync all of that across all your web browsers. You can download XBrowser Sync from their website, that is xbrowsersync.org, or you can download their web extensions from the respective web store of your web browser. And you can also download their Android application from FProid to use on your Android device. You can choose from any of the public XBrowser Sync services to sync to, or you can run your own API server to have complete control of your data. I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. To host your own X-Processing service, you can refer to the documentation that they provide on their GitHub page. I will be using the same documentation to run my own server as well. There are two ways to do that. One is running a Docker container or you can perform a manual installation. I will be going ahead with the manual installation. To begin with the installation, I will head over to my DigitalOcean dashboard and create a droplet. I have chosen the Ubuntu 20.04 LTS Focal Fossa image. I have chosen the $5 droplet as it's more than enough for our API server. I'll enable monitoring and then set a root password for my droplet. Once that's set up, I'll set the hostname for my droplet to the subdomain I will set up for XBrowser Sync, that is xbs.plakebiomass.com. I'll click on Create Droplet to spin up the server. It takes about a minute for the setup to finish, after which I can SSH into my server and start the installation. Now that I have created my droplet, I will head over to my Namecheap dashboard. Namecheap is the domain registrar for my domain. Here, I will create an A record in my DNS. This A record will point the subdomain for the API server to my digital ocean droplet. The change in the DNS will take around half an hour to propagate, after which my subdomain will start pointing to the droplet. That means if someone were to visit xps.platebiomass.com, they will land on the site hosted on my DigitalOcean server. Once my DNS records have been set, I will open up Putty and SSH into my server. I will use the root password I set in my DigitalOcean dashboard to log in. The first thing that I will do is update and upgrade my server. For that, I will run apt space update to update the package repos and then apt space upgrade to upgrade the installed packages. It will take some time, so be patient. I'll be back once the server finishes the upgrade. So, 
The server has finished upgrading and now I will reboot the server and restart the party session. Once the session has been restarted, we are ready to install the API server package onto our droplet. First, I'll create a subdirectory by the name of xbs in my home directory. This is where I will clone the GitHub repository and build the API server. I'll use the command mkdir space xbs to create the directory. Then I will change the directory to xbs using the command cd space xbs. Now we need to install some prerequisites or dependencies to build the server. We need mongodb and node.js. To install mongodb, I will use the command apt space install space mongodb. Once mongodb is installed, I will install node.js by using the command apt space install space npm. npm is the node package manager and installing npm will install node.js and npm for us. Both of these are required to build our API server. Now that we have all the prerequisites installed, we can start building the API server. I'll clone the GitHub repository by copying and pasting the command from the documentation. Once the repository is cloned, I will switch to the API directory by using the command cd space API. Now I will copy and paste the install command on the terminal and hit enter. Node package manager will go ahead and install all required dependencies and build the API server for us. This will take a while and I'll be back once it's finished. Once the build for the API server is finished, it's time to make some configuration changes. I will open up the MongoDB shell and copy and paste the commands from the documentation. Please remember to change the password variable with your own password. Once all the commands have been run, I will exit out of the MongoDB shell. Now we need to set the environment variables that our API server will use to connect to the database. I will use the commands given in the documentation to edit my profile and set the required environment variables, then save the file. We need to make one more change into the MongoDB shell as we are running the server using a public IP. In this case, our subdomain that we set up earlier. I will copy and paste the command from the documentation in the MongoDB shell and press enter. Once done, I will exit out of the shell. Now that we have configured MongoDB, it's time to configure the API server. You can refer to the detailed documentation for each value on GitHub. I will make a copy of settings.default.json and rename it to settings.json. Settings.json will overwrite the settings in default.settings.json. Once I've made the copy, I will start editing the configuration file. I 
I will make changes to the daily news increment, post name, port, and certificate path. Once I have made the initial changes, I will save the file and exit. Before moving forward, we need to make sure that we set up the API log file. Once done, we are ready to set up our free SSL certificate using Let's Encrypt. I'll install Let's Encrypt using the command apt space install space Let's Encrypt. Once it is installed, I will issue the command to provision the SSL certificate for my server. You can refer to the official documentation for Let's Encrypt for detailed instructions and command for your server. Now I will edit the config file again and this time make the necessary changes required to make SSL work. I will paste the path that I just copied in the quotes in front of the cert path and key path parameters. I will also change the last name in the path to cert.pem for cert path and privkey.pem for key path. Now I will change the false flag to true and port number to 443 as SSL works on port 443. Once all the changes are done, I will save the file and exit. I will also reboot the server and restart the session before running our API server. Once the server has been restarted, I will go to the API directory in the XPS folder that I created in my home directory. Here I will run the command screen space hyphen capital S space XPS. Screen command will open a virtual shell in which I can run commands. This will prevent the server from terminating once I end my party session. I will issue the command to run the API server and then detach from the terminal using control plus A plus D. Now I will check if I can access the default server page on the subdomain I set up or not. As you can see that the default server page is accessible through our subdomain over HTTPS. That means we have successfully set up the X Browser Sync API server. Now I will test if our API server is working properly by installing X Browser Sync in multiple web browsers and checking if X Browser Sync can sync my bookmarks or not. So I have two web browsers open. One is Chromium and the other is Vivaldi. I will install the extension in both the web browsers and then set it up to see if they can sync my bookmarks properly. Now that the extension has been installed in both the web browsers, I'll set it up on each of them. First, I will allow the extra permissions in Chrome and Vivaldi. Once I have allowed the extra permissions, I will be greeted by the Welcome to X Browser Sync screen. 
The next few screens will take you over on how to use the extension to sync your bookmarks. Once you have gone through all the screens, click on continue. To change the service URL, I will click on switch service. I will paste the link to my API server here. Once I have pasted the link, I will click on update. Click on yes. Now I will enter an encryption password. Make sure that you remember your encryption password so that you can use XBrowser Sync on multiple devices to sync your bookmarks. Once you set your password, click on next and then enter your password one more time to confirm and after that click on sync. And that's it. You have registered your web browser to sync your bookmarks with your own API server. Now I will copy my sync ID since that is the unique identifier I will use on every device that I have so that I can sync it to my API server. It is a unique identifier that identifies your account on your API server. Before setting it up on the other web browser, I will make a few bookmarks and see if they are being synced to the server or not. Let's bookmark facebook.com. I will also make a bookmark of my YouTube channel. Now I will switch over to Chromium and set up X processing in Chromium. I will paste in the URL for my API server again and then copy my sync ID from Vivaldi. I will also use the encryption password that I set earlier and then I will click on sync. Now that I have Xbrowser Sync set up on Chromium as well, I will see if I can access my old bookmarks that I bookmarked in Vivaldi. As you can see that Xbrowser Sync shows the bookmarks that I bookmarked in Vivaldi and so the syncing is working. Let's see if the reverse is possible. Now I will make a bookmark in Chromium and see if it gets reflected in Vivaldi. I will put in a random search term and use the first link to bookmark. Let's click on update sync and see what happens. As you can see that Xbrowser Sync successfully updated my bookmarks and I was able to sync my bookmarks across multiple web browsers. I can also do it on my phone using their Android application. And that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.